Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on the book of Lefticus. So before we could start a class, may I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Father, we thank you for this time you've given us. We humble ourselves before your presence and ask your wisdom to lead us. Help us understand your scriptures better, Lord. We give this session to your hands and ask for your grace to be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, well, I'll start with our presentation. I'll present the notes to us. So all of us have downloaded the PDF of the Old Testament survey notes, isn't it? Class, were you all able to download the notes? Yes, yes, Pastor. Okay. Yes, Pastor. Thank you. If you all have any challenges, please do let me know. I can personally email it to you if you're unable to download it. Okay. So are we able to see the presentation that is appearing on the screen? Yes, Pastor. If someone can confirm it by unmuting yourself. Yes, Pastor. Okay, great. So uh, <clears throat> we, uh, we studied on the book of Genesis and we also covered on the book of Exodus. So in the book of Exodus, we saw the people of Israel were delivered from Egypt and they received the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai. And by the end of the book, we also saw them building a tabernacle and the glory of the Lord was filling in it. Now, in the beginning of Leviticus, they are still camping at the Mount Sinai in the wilderness. And we see, uh, we see God giving instruction to the people of Israel through his servant Moses, showing them how to worship and serve him. So Leviticus is the third book of the Pentateuch. In Hebrew Bible, this book is called by the title Ve Veikra, which means and he called. There are three instances where uh, uh, the scripture records that the Lord called Moses. Yes, there are many times that God has conversed with Moses, but then it's recorded as the Lord and he called or the Lord called Moses. The first Okay, the first place was at the burning bush. We see that in Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. And the second instance was at Mount Sinai, chapter nine, uh, Exodus chapter 19, verse 3. And the third place is in the book of Leviticus chapter 1, verse 1. The Greek title for the book is Leuticon, which means, uh, which pertains to the Levites. Genesis is the book of the beginnings, and we saw Exodus as the book of redemption. And now we see Leviticus is the book of atonement. So we also saw in uh, Genesis, uh, the man was ruined. And Exodus showed us that the man was redeemed. And in this book, Leviticus, as we study, we can see man being cleansed, worshipping and serving. So this book, gives us, this book gives us an understanding of the structure and regulated uh, uh, the set of sacrifices and feasts which have been observed by the people of Israel. So when we, uh, we see what type of book is this, this book is the book of law. It is also known as the book of Moses, the third book in the Old Testament and the third book in our Bible, the third book of the five part of the Jewish collection, which is, which is known as Torah. The author of this book, we all know, who is the author? Moses. Yes, Moses is the author. I request... Uh, let our sessions be interactive. So I, I would recommend our students to quickly unmute and respond so that we may not lose on the time, but we keep our sessions interactive. <laughs> 
okay and uh, we see uh, moses wrote leviticus to the jewish people during their 40 years of wilderness journey <clears throat> at mount sinai sorry i'm just clearing my throat one second please Uh, we also see uh, in Leviticus provides the details regarding the priest, the sacrifice, the holy days, the laws, the Jewish people, which is still now required for them to follow in their nation. The title Leviticus refers to whom? Yeah, you all can unmute. The title Leviticus refers to whom? tribe of Levites? Yes, to the Levites. The tribe of priests who were responsible for overseeing and uh, practicing their rituals at the temple. So during this uh, 40 years in the wilderness was approximately the, uh, the time frame maybe uh, 1440 to 1400 BC. Let's see the overview of the chapters. This book contains 27 chapters. Okay, so we are going to study on the, the themes of this book. Okay, the f there are four themes in this book. The book consists of 27 chapters and covers four major themes. What are those themes? The first theme includes regarding the five major offering of, uh, uh, offerings that God commanded the Israelites to practice. So what are the five uh, offerings that was listed? Can anyone unmute and say? Burnt, grain, peace, sin, and trespass. Excellent. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry. So there were five offerings. That is the burnt offering. The grain offering is also known as the meal offering. We see peace, sin, and trespass offerings. We see this covering from uh, Leviticus chapter 1 to uh, chapter 7. And the laws are presented to the people. And we see how the laws regarding these sacrifices are presented even to the priest. Now, the second theme, we, the major theme we see is the origin of the Jewish priest from chapter 8 to chapter 10. In chapter 8, we see Aaron and his sons are ordained as the priest of the Jewish people. One second, I'll just accept somebody has locked in. Okay, I've accepted them. And um, uh, <clears throat> in chapter 9, we see these priests offer their first sacrifice. And in chapter 10, then, then describes the account of Aaron's sons, Nabab and Abihu, dying before the Lord to their unauthorized sacrifices. The third major theme we see includes laws regarding the uncleanness. Uncleanness in Leviticus chapter. 11 to chapter 16. This includes a law regarding the unclean animals as well uh, the unclean related to the childbearing. And in chapter 13, we see how Moses lists a variety of unclean diseases and disorders. And in chapter 15, we see unclean discharge. And in chapter 16, it, it uh, shows the shift to the tabernacle and how to keep it pure from all uncleanness, uh, giving specific instruction regarding what is known as Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement. Now, we will study this when we are studying the feast of the Jewish people. So the fourth, the fourth major theme addresses the practical guidelines for holy living, which is covering from chapter 17 to chapter 27. So there are 11 total topics in this. There are sacrifices and food in Leviticus 17 and sexual behavior in Leviticus 18, treatment of neighbors and 
serious crimes in Leviticus 19 and 20. We see priestly regulation from Leviticus 21 to 22 and festivals uh, we see in 23 and uh, the tabernacle holiness we see in chapter 24 various civil punishment and special years of sabbath and jubilee we see that from uh, chapter 23 to 25 and blessing and curses and voluntary gifts or vows we see in the last chapter 27 with this we will move on to the key events What happened? My system is stuck. One minute, please. Sorry about that. We finished on themes. Now we are talking about the key events. We're talking about uh, uh, the key events. Now we finished with the themes and we will talk about the five key events. In Leviticus, the beginning of the priesthood. So it starts from the pre priesthood also starts with the sacrifices because uh, uh, they have to perform the rituals at the temple. So we need the priest. So um, God asked Moses to anoint Aaron as priest and we see his generation, the two sons, also Nabab and Habiu joining the Levites and we will talk about the uh, when we talk about uh, the beginning of priesthood more to talk is about the uh, the five offerings what are the five offerings can you see the slide with the five offerings yes okay yes, yes. So the first offering we are going to uh, look into the first is the burnt offering the burnt offering uh, uh, these are uh, these are the few offerings that god instructed moses uh, uh, for the priest to do these offerings so the first is the burnt offering here we have the highest aspect of the work of christ where uh, he's been offering himself up entirely to God to do his will even unto death so the whole offering except the skin of the animal was burnt upon the altar and all went up to God as a su sweet savor it pictures uh, as the Christ who gave himself as a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor Christ is not seen here as bearing, bearing our sins, but accomplishing the Father's will, glorifying God and vindicating the holiness and the majesty of his throne. This theme is especially prominent in the Gospel of John, and we also see this in Psalms 40. So, so the second type of offering is the meal offering or the grain offering this offering uh, again it signifies the christ uh, as the perfect and the sinless man represents to us his uh, wonderful person and the spotless life which was uh, ever an offering of a sweet savor unto god so there was no shedding of blood in this offering so it speaks of the perfection of christ person and life 
rather than of his death. The fine flour, uh, you know, the grains that are offered, there are different types of grains and they offer that to God. Uh, 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 this fine flour pictures a sinless humanity uh, with its evenness of uh, moral qualities. And uh, uh, when they offer these grains, they also add uh, oil to it, which pictures the grace and power of the Holy Spirit, which is characterized for his life and they also add the frankincense over the offering uh, to embalm it uh, to get the fragrance of his person and his life remember uh, in in burnt offering the meat of the lamp has been sacrificed at the burnt offering and here we see the meal has been offered to god remember in the whole burnt offering was saying that it is it denotes that uh, you know uh, all that i am is of the lord and the grain offering when we offer the uh, meal or the grain offering it denotes saying that all i have is the lord's because people tend to offer the first fruits from their harvest they offer it as a meal offering as a grain offering to god you know, they offer with whole of their heart, uh, you know, uh, telling like, Lord, I, I have this hope on you. I trust on you that you will provide me throughout the season, throughout the year, despite what calamities can come, what may be the situation, no matter what accidents can happen. But I trust in you that you are my provider. So with all reverence, they take that first fruit and offer it to the Lord as a grain offering. And with this, we will come to the peace offering. But before I could move ahead, I want to let you know that the first three offerings are the voluntary offering. The second is this, the last two is the mandatory offering, the sin offering and the sin offering and the Trespasser. Yes. Okay. So we are at the peace offering. We are at the peace offering. This was also an offering of a sweet savor to God, uh, where the blood, the fat, and the uh, the kidneys uh, of the offering were put upon the altar, and the food of the offering was made by fire unto the Lord. We see this in Leviticus chapter three. This was God's part. Then the breast was given to Aaron and the sons and the right shoulders to the offering priest. This was man's part. Thus God and man both fed on the same offering which speaks of communion and fellowship. And this is a type of the communion which the believer in Christ enjoys with God on the ground of the work of Christ at the cross that you and I have that access to. And his blood shed there was for our sins, so that we are at the peace with God through the work of the cross and can feed upon the Christ in fellowship with the Father. We see that in the Gospel of Luke and also in Psalms 85, which presents in detail about this theme. The next offering we go, which is the two mandatory offering. The fourth one is the sin offering. We come now to the non-sweet savor offering. The special features of this offering is in the whole bullock burnt upon the ground outside the camp of Israel. After the blood and fat were put upon the altar of the God, this offering was for sin and pictures as the Christ who made sin for us. As what uh, Paul writes to 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. And endured the judgment and wrath of God against sin is our stead as a substitute. The holiness of God and the awfulness of sin are brought out of in out in the bullock being entirely burnt outside the camp. So this pictures the forsaken of God and our sin bearer as given in Psalms 22 and also in the Gospel of Mark. Yes, can you please mute your, mute your mic? 
someone's mic is on well with this we'll come to the last offering that is a trespass offering or the guilt offering here we see the sin is looked as a trespass against the against the kingdom of god amends had to be made for the wrong doing and the fifth part is added the atonement was made by the blood of the offering and the trespass was forgiven this offering presents christ who died for our sins and trespasses on the cross restoring that which he took not away he has not only answered to god for our sins and paid our debts but he also died and shed his blood for us as this is added as the fifth part bringing more glory to god and more blessing to man that way had uh, before sin was committed this is the first view of the sinners uh, that uh, that gets of the cross of christ we see that in psalms 69 and in uh, gospel of matthew presenting the aspect of the offering of christ himself today we may not bring the dove or the animal to offer to god but what we bring to the house of worship is our expression of gratitude to god we need to come before him in his presence with the expression of gratitude for his son jesus christ who died on the cross who sacrificed himself that we may we may don't have to you know sacri follow these five type of sacrifice for our sins so whatever we have when we come into the presence of god let's come with a heart of gratitude and uh, uh, let's not despise the small gifts that we can bring in to the house of the lord because god delights in our offering god delights when we uh, give our tithe the first fruit of our uh, the work of our hands into god's kingdom so let's do that with all reverence and uh, with a heart of gratitude saying lord you have blessed me and this is what it is so th uh, these are the uh, offerings that we shared about the five offerings with the three are the voluntary offerings and the two were the mandatory offerings and with this we will move on to the second key event the, the sin of nabab and abihu what happened to uh, the sons of aaron why did god kill them can anyone tell me i think the fire uh, for the burnt sacrifice or they they took it wrong i'm not sure. i i don't remember the details but yeah yes something regarding the fire good good yes yes you're right the way anyone else this is recorded in leviticus chapter 10 leviticus chapter 10 verse 1 to 2 i'll just read it out for you Now Nabab and Habiu the sons of Aaron each took his censer and put fire in it and laid incense on it and offered unauthorized fire before the Lord which he had not commanded them the fire came out from before the Lord and consumed them and they died before the Lord you see the unauthorized fire was met with an unquenchable one god killed both of them on spot and it was so dramatic rabab and abu sudden death raises a lot of question what exactly was this strange fire did they use a wrong incense or did they come out at a wrong time or did they enter the holy of holies or were they drunk when we read that chapter or did they offer a uh, 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 incense to a false god because our god is a jealous god we can't be certain but one thing we know is that 
he clearly disobeyed the command of God. You shall not offer unauthorized incense on it. For yet some reason, they shrouded out the warning and they, got, they were paid for it. There are three points that we can take from this very act. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing this because God wants us to pause, ponder, and to learn from this, the three lessons from the very act of Aaron's sons. The first is, there are no small sins. God rains fire on Sodom and Gomorrah to make sense. There are no small sin or a big sin in front of God. He is a holy God. We see in Genesis records about the eating the forbidden fruit or looking, uh, looking back at a city. You know, the Lord's wife, when she turned and looked back, she became a, a salt of pillar. Then we see in the book of Numbers, hitting a rock, Moses hitting a rock. When God asked Moses to speak to the rock, but he hid the rock. Or later in the book, in Second Samuel, we will come across saying how the people, by touching the Ark of the Covenant, they fell dead. And in the New Testament, in the book of Acts chapter 5, we see, uh, you know, the lying about the real estate withholding of Ananias and Sapphira. And the second point we see here is how we worship matters. So the first we saw there are no small sins. And the second is how we worship the Lord matters. Our heart condition matters because God is a holy God. We need to fear God with all reverence. That was something missing in these two priests. Though they were set apart to serve God, we need to uh, we need to uh, we need to serve god with all reverence in all the area of a uh, you know in we serving god and the third point we see here is we need to be a better priest we need to be a better priest Nabab and Habiyu were everything you don't want in a priest to be. They minimized sin and made up their own rules for worshipping God. Their fault and fertility are intended to remind us of our countless sins. Their judgment shows us how great need for a priest who perfectly keeps God's law and always lives to intercede for us. We need to be a better priest because in New Testament we see that Peter is saying that we are the royal priesthood chosen by God, set apart. So we are the priest now. And as we are the priest, how should we? How should we lead our life before God? Hence, we need Jesus. When we have Jesus with us, we can, uh, you know, we can pursue uh, to be the better person, to, uh, to be a better person, pleasing to God. It's only the Holy Spirit who can lead us, who can guide us in the right way. So we need Jesus. We need his Holy Spirit. So the three things which we see, the lessons that we learned from Aaron's sons are there are no small sins and how we should worship, how we worship God matters. And the third point is we need a better priest. We need to be a better priest. With this, we will move on to the next. Uh, the third event, key event is the Day of Atonement and the Feast of the Lord. So the Day of Atonement also gets covered in the Feast of the Lord. So we will study on the Feast of the Lord. The seventh annual Feast of the Jewish. Uh, below, we see in this uh, picture, we see, I've listed uh, 1 to 12, uh, the year in the Jewish calendar. It may not uh, fall exactly as per the English calendar. It is very different. Well, the first we see the first feast, Passover, and the second feast, Unleavened Bread, and the third, First Fruit, has been celebrated in the first month of Nisan. And the fourth feast, the Feast of Weeks, that is called as Pentecost, is celebrated in the third month of Sivan. 
and the fifth feast, the feast of the trumpets and the day of atonement, six, and the seventh feast, the feast of the tabernacle, are celebrated in the seventh month of the Jewish calendar, which is called as Tish, Tishri. Now we can uh, go in detail and study what these feasts are. The Passover, we see that in uh, Leviticus chapter 23, specifies the festival year begins with the Passover on the 14th day of the first month, that is the Nisan. Passover is the feast of salvation in both testament. The blood of the lamb delivers the slavery, the Jews from the Egypt. It's in the remembrance, the commemorating what happened in the Egypt and, um, and in the New Testament, the Christians from their sin. Think about uh, the 10 plagues that happened in, uh, in the book of Exodus when you know, Egypt's first born sons were died with the angel of death passed over. So the Jewish homes uh, had, had, had put the blood of the lamp on the lintel, on the doorpost, and uh, the angel of death passed by. In the same way, in the New Testament, we see uh, Jesus serves as the sacrificial lamp. It is no coincidence that our Lord himself was to sacrifice on the Passover. Passover. So the Passover in the New Testament represents our salvation, where we have the eternal life in Christ by receiving him as our Lord and Savior. The second feast we see is the unle unleavened bread. We see that in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 6, puts the second feast on the next night, on the 15th day of the same month, is the feast of the unleavened bread unto the Lord. The seven days you must eat this unleavened bread. Leaven or yeast in the Bible symbolizes sin and evil. Unleavened bread uh, eaten over a period of time, it symbolized a holy walk as with the Lord. The unleavened bread is, uh, um, is the body of our Lord. It has been described as the bread of life. He is the bread of life. Uh, we see that in the New Testament, Jesus saying that I am the bread of life. So that is what has been celebrated on this day of unleavened bread. The third feast is the first fruits. And in Hebrew, it is known as Yom Habikurim. On the day of uh, uh, before a Sabbath, following the unleavened bread in Leviticus, we see this in Leviticus 23. Uh, verse 11 schedules the first fruit, the feast for acknowledging the fertility of the land. Uh, like God gave the Israelites the land and they were bringing the early crops of the spring, planting and waving the sheaves before the Lord. And the modern church, modern day church has come to call this feast as Easter, named after Ishtar. We continue to uh, revive the objects of fertility, such as the rabbit and the eggs. But the first fruit celebration was to be over God's replanting of the earth in the spring. And today, this feast celebrates the resurrection of the Lord on the first fruit, which indeed occurred. So this is what we need to remember through as we celebrate this feast. With this, we will move on to the fourth feast. Feast of Pentecost, which is recorded in the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 16, says, Even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall you number fifty days, and you shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. In late May or early June, according to our calendar, Shavuot marked the summer harvest. 
In Leviticus 20, chapter 23, verse 17 says, requires an offering of two loaves of bread baked with leaven. These loaves symbolizes the church being compromised of both Jews and Gentiles. It is no more only for Jews, but the church is for both Jews and Gentiles. The Christ is for both Jews and Gentiles. With this, we will move on to the fifth feast, that is the trumpets. It's called in, in Hebrew or in Jewish, it is called as Yom Teruah. It is called as Yom, Y-O-E-M, Y-O-M, Teruah, T-E-R-U-A-H. Ever since Isaac was spared by the virt uh, virtue of the ram being caught in the, uh, in, the, in the thorny bush, his horn was caught in the thorny bush, God seems to have enjoyed the trumpet. So he used it when Joshua conquered Jericho, and also we see in Leviticus 25, he specifies its use in having a trumpet, proclaiming the liberty throughout all the land and to all the inhabitants thereof. So in Leviticus 23, 24, it requires that in the seventh month, in, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets. So the Feast of Trumpets, which occurs uh, in September, according to our calendar. So this jump in time from the Feast of Pentecost, that is, uh, that occurs in the month of May or June, seems to represent the church age in God's planning. Since the trumpet unquestionably reverence the rapture of Christ. The trumpet was the signal for the field workers to come into the temple for prayer. The high priest actually blew the trumpet so that the faithful would stop harvesting to worship. Now, when the trumpet sound in accordance with 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 51, uh, living believers will seize the harvest and rise from the earth. The church will be back out of the world. And here it also talks about the rapture, which is yet to come. And the sixth point, it talks about atonement, which is another feast called Yom Kippur, which is recorded in the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 27 provides a day of confession, the highest of the holy days. Also on the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you. And you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. This is one of the fees that is not fulfilled by the church because the church owes no atonement. The church is not innocent, of course, but it is exonerated. The Day of Atonement will be fulfilled in a wonderful way when the Lord returns as a second coming. So we are waiting for the Lord. With this, we will move on to the fourth festival. What is the fourth? Sorry, the seventh one, which is the seventh festival? The Feast yeah. of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacle. We see this has been recorded in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 34. The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacle. For seven days unto the Lord, and God wanted to celebrate the fact that he provided shelter for the Israelites in the wilderness. And each year on this tabernacle, devotes Jews built little shelters or uh, small booths, which is, also, uh, which is called as Sukkot, outside their houses and worshipped in them. Tabernacle represents the Lord's shelter in the world to come. His great tabernacle will exist in Jerusalem during the kingdom age. The Lord will establish his tabernacle in Jerusalem. 
which is a prophesy yet to be fulfilled, which is uh, recorded in Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 26. And the world will come every year to appear before the king and worship him. It's recorded in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16 to 17. So it is the millennium time. And we will study in detail about this in eschatology. With this, we will move on to the lending of the poor. What does lending of the poor mean? Can one of us take the scripture and read Leviticus chapter 25? Verse 35 to 38, please. Go ahead, Jeffina, please. Yes. The ticket is chapter 25, verse 35 to 38. If one of your fellow Israelites fall into poverty and cannot support himself, support him as you would do a foreigner or a temporary resident and allow him to live with you. Do not charge interest to make a profit at his ex expense. Instead, show your fear of God by letting him live with you as your relative. Remember, do not charge interest on money you lend him or make a profit on food you sell him. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. Amen. Amen. So if one of your brethren becomes poor, the scripture says, it commands us specifically, profit no money out of him. Instead, we need to help him, expecting nothing. And we also see, take no usury or interest from him, but fear your God and your brother may live with you. So Jesus made a very simple commandment for us in the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 34. When he asked what credit could it be to us, if we give to or help only those who can return help to us, what does it credit? Isn't it? We need to help the helpless. And we need to help without expecting anything in return. Very clearly, God says, expect everything from me. But when it comes to people, just help them. Do not expect anything from them. And we also see the third point in this verse is, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan. God's kindness and generosity to Israel were, was an example for us as a type of kindness and generosity that we need to show others. Despite our need, when God was there to help us, and it is our duty, it is a mandate for each of us to help our brethren, especially in seasons such as this. There are so many people around us. It can be among a friend circle, a family, a church, a neighbor. When you come across, if people have lost their job, going through difficult time, see what best you could do for them in this season without expecting anything from them. So what is the practical application from this book of Le Leviticus that we learned today? And you'll share a few points, a few applications that we can learn. Mm, we need to be a better priest. Yes. help others. And I learned that God is very holy. Praise God. Yes. He's a holy God. Anyone else? 
Uh, one thing uh, that really fascinated me was uh, how the fees were completely fulfilled. Uh, I mean, there are some fees yet to be fulfilled, but Jesus Christ became the fulfillment for uh, yes. that, that's really beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tavia. Can I share one more thing? Yes, please. Yeah, one thing that I that I really, really love by knowing this is there were a lot of offerings that people did. I I wonder if we have to offer all of these things at this time, it would be really hard. But how great is the is our love? Is God's love towards us? Like Praise once God. and for all, Jesus gave all the sacrifices that we should have done. So. And I'm so thankful for that. Like once and for all, by taking the cross for us, He did everything, and that is so great. Praise God! Yes, that's exactly what uh, the Scripture records in Hebrew nine eleven to twenty uh, twenty eight, I guess. Yeah, where it says that Jesus made for us, so that we can be cleansed from all our sins once and for all. Once and for all, He paid. A price and we are cleansed from our sins and what an assurance that we get from this anyone else anyone else would like to add on what was our learning from this book So no longer we have to do any such rituals or sacrifice in order to be in the presence of God. So our position is so much confirmed that we are in Christ. We are right standing through Christ with God. So Jesus paid it all. Jesus was a one-time sacrifice through which we can enjoy this relationship, this fellowship with God, which was initially intended to be with the mankind, and Jesus restored it back. We see in the Leviticus chapter 19 too, as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. As we are the child of God, as God has called us, set us apart. The process is, I mean, uh, being holy uh, is a process where we seek God. We need the help of Jesus. When we uh, seek God, the Holy Spirit who lives in us helps us uh, to do the things that pleases God, uh, to lead our life in the right path that pleases God. We are still human. We are not perfect but we have been made perfect in Christ okay also Anna, can I share what I my, my lesson from yes this? Elisha okay. um, what I, I have really impacted with today's classes the sin of Nabat and Abihu I have learned that we don't have to lower the high standards of God to, to favor or to our interest. We always need to comply with the standards of God, no matter how little or how higher it may be. We don't have to set our own standards and live by them. Thank you. My man, we need to rise our standards to meet God. Amen. Anyone else would like to add on? So what are the things that we studied from the book of Leviticus? Just a recap. We have studied about two forms of offering. There is voluntary and mandatory offering. Thank you. Yes. The first thing we studied about the offering, the five offerings. Second, the five key events. 
<laughs> which covered everything okay uh, yes we we studied about uh, the priest we will in detail study about the priest the priestly attire but uh, fair enough we know what are the priest rituals were uh, which was ordered by god himself and uh, the consequence of aaron's two sons which led uh, i mean god i mean they were due to their sin uh, the wages of sin is death as the scripture records we see that and the third we uh, we saw about the feasts of the jewish feasts the seven um, uh, jewish feast we saw what are those feasts can anyone tell me what are the seven feasts that we studied today there is the feast of the passover Yes. Unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. The first fruit. First fruit. Okay. Feast of weeks. Yes. Uh, trumpets. Feast of trumpets. Yes. Day of atonement. Uh -huh. uh, Feast of the tabernacle. So the first three feasts that the Passover, the unleavened bread, and the first fruits are the past which has already occurred. The Feast of Weeks is the Pentecost, which is in the present. We are, and there are three feasts which talks about the future. About the the Feast of the Trumpets denotes the rapture. The Day of Atonement is the second coming of Christ, and the Feast of Tabernacle, the Millennium. Okay. And also the last point we studied about lending to the poor. Can I, can and, I say something that's... Yes. Okay. Um, if you read through the book of Leviticus, there is something that reading through I recognize. I realize that uh, the priest and the Levites were given special recognition in the book. Now, the lesson that I think we can all learn from here is that people who labor in the house of God are given recognition. So we should not grow weary in our laboring in the house of the Lord or doing the work of God. Surely Amen. God will give us the recognition that we so deserve. Amen. Yes, we should not grow very. Thank you so much, Elisha. That is very important. Mm, what happened to the presentation? Okay, there's an assignment. I have two questions as an assignment. You can make a note of it while I present it. Just give me a minute. Can you see the assignment? So throughout the book of Leviticus, there's a continual instruction regarding uh, the dedication to personal holiness as a response to the holiness of God. So the first question here is, does our understanding of God's holiness reflect the importance of our personal holiness? Pastor, we are, we are not able to see the questions. We are seeing the key events and themes slide um, I don't know today why this presentation is not moving just give me a minute please sorry about that yes. let me close it it's locked thanks Divya for letting me know no problem sometimes it appears on my screen but you know uh, the recipient may not see that. Okay, so please let me know if you're able to see the assignment screen when it appears on your desktop. Okay. Uh, 
maybe I'll just read it out to you, read the question out to you. Uh, for some reason, it's it's not displaying. Okay, the first question is: Does our understanding Or I can do this, I can put it in the chat. Let me see if I can do that. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes. You all can hear me. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, the problem is with the Google Meet due to network connection. I guess it's not, uh, uh, I'm not able to go through the screen. Okay, let me dictate it for you. Even I'm not able to post it on the chat or present. Uh, let me know if my call gets disconnected also. I'm not aware. Okay, so quickly let me say this. Uh, does our understanding of God's holiness reflect the importance of our personal holiness? Does our understanding of God's holiness reflect the importance of our personal holiness? Can one of you all please post this on the chat so it may help all the others in the class? The second question is from where do we derive our standards? Uh, so, guys, um, I'll be posting the two questions right now in the chat. So, please stay online. I'll just post it in a minute.
Yeah, so uh, I have just posted the assignment. So Pastor Diana's network was a little issue. So uh, she just called and gave this uh, to question. So you can please take it down. This, so first question is, does our understanding of, on God's holiness reflect the importance of our personal holiness? I think the final has already pasted it. The second one, from where do we derive our standards of holiness? Is it from God or the world? All right. Um, so we'll uh, end the class in prayer, so you can log out after the prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time you've given us to learn from your word. We pray that everything that we learned, we'll be able to put to practice. Thank you for all those who have joined this call today. Lord, we pray that you will be our shield and help us to understand more of your word in this season, God. We thank you in Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow. Hi, Pastor. I shared the questions. And... Oh, thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah. I'm back and I can stop the recording now. Yeah, thank yeah, you. please go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Pastor.